this is part 30 of Angular 2 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the basics of routing in Angular. So what is routing in general? Routing allows us to navigate from one view to another view. Let's understand this with an example. Within our application, we have got employee list component within the employee folder. Now let's create another component. Let's call it home component so we can see how to navigate from home component to employee list component and vice versa. So I'm going to place this home component in its own folder. So let's add a new folder to the app folder and let's name this new folder home and we're going to place our new component within this folder. So let's right click on this folder add and we want to add a new TypeScript file and let's call this file home.component.ts and as you can see, this component is very simple and straightforward. All this is going to do is display this message. This is the home page. Now, all the components that we have built so far in this video series had a selector property. We then use that selector property as a directive where we want to use that component. But notice, this component does not have the selector property. The selector property is only required if we plan to embed this component inside another component using that selector as a directive. Instead, we are going to route to this component using Angular Router. That's the reason we have omitted the selector property. Now, let's register this component in a module where we want to use it. At the moment, within our application, we only have one module, which is our application root module, app.module.ts. So within this file, let's import our home component. And then within the declarations array, let's specify our home component. Now, if a user tries to navigate to a component that does not exist, we want to route the user to a page not found component. We don't have that page not found component yet, so let's go ahead and create that. I'm going to place that component within this others folder. So let's right click on the others folder and add a new TypeScript file. Let's name this page not found dot component dot ts. And here is the code for page not found component. Again, this component is pretty straightforward. Notice we are using the h1 element just to display this message. The page you're looking for does not exist. Notice just like our home component, this component also does not have the selector property. Now let's go ahead and register this component also with our application module. So let's include the required import statement and then specify the component as part of the declaration array of our ng module decorator. So the component name is page not found component. So at the moment within our application we have got three components employee list component, home component and page not found component. So let's see how to use routing to navigate between these three components. Let's look at the steps required. The first step is to set base href element in our application host page which is usually index.html. In our application host page we have already set this base href element. This base href element tells Angular how to compose navigation URLs. So if you look at our index.html page we have already set the base href element as you can see right here. Next import router module and define our routes. So within our application root module, which is app.module.ts, just like how we have imported other system modules like browser module, forms module, and HTTP module, let's also import router module. In addition to router module, we are also importing routes. Routes is nothing but an array of route objects. So if we right click on this and go to definition, we can see routes is nothing but an array of route objects. We're going to use this to define our routes. We'll do that in just a bit. So import router module and routes from Angular router and then make this router module part of the import array just like how we have made browser module, forms module and HTTP module. Next, let's define our application routes. To do that, I'm going to create a constant. Let's call the constant app routes. We can give it any meaningful name we want. Since here we are creating application routes, I called it app routes. And the type for this is going to be routes. And you know what routes is? 
it's an array of route objects. So this array is going to contain route objects. And here is our first route object. It contains path and component properties. So what is this route object telling Angular Router? Basically it is telling Angular Router if it sees this path home appended to the base URL then navigate the user to home component. Similarly if we see employees path appended to the base URL then navigate the user to employee list component. So let's define two other routes. Now what should happen if the user navigates to the root URL that is to localhost for slash src that's our base URL. So if the user navigates to that base URL then which component do we want to display to the user and we specify that using an empty path. So in this case we set path to an empty string so basically the user didn't enter any path like home, employees, etc. It's empty. It's just the base URL. In that case, we want to redirect the user to a different route. And to which route do we want to redirect the user? We want to redirect the user to home. That's what we typically do in any application. If users navigate to the root of the application, for example, to presumetech.com, then we redirect the user to home page. And that's what we are doing here as well. And what kind of path match we want to do? We want to do a full path match. And finally, let's specify the wildcard route. Now, if a user enters a route that does not exist at all, for example, ABC, we don't have a route called ABC. So what do we want to do in that case? In that case, we want to redirect the user to page not found component and we have already created page not found. So here are our four routes that we have defined. Now we have just created this routes object. We need to tell Angular Router about these routes. And the way we do that is by using for root method of the router module. So we use the for root method and if you notice from IntelliSense it takes an array of route objects. So here we have our route objects. So let's pass that to the for root method. So we defined our routes and we are letting the Angular router know about these routes using the for root method of the router module. One very important point to keep in mind is the order of these routes is very important. So more specific routes should be at the top and general routes should be at the bottom. And that's exactly the reason why we have included this wildcard route in the end. For example, if we enter ABC in the URL, then that path does not match any of these routes. So it falls back to this route and it displays page not found component. Since this wildcard route matches every route, it should be in the end. What happens if we place it at the beginning? If we place it at the beginning, for every route it's going to display page not found. For example, if it's at the beginning and we type home, that matches this route and it's going to display page not found. So more general route should be at the bottom and more specific route should be at the top. So at this point we have our routes defined. Our next step is to tie these routes to the application menu so the users can click on the application menu items and navigate around. Let's create our application menu within our root component which is app.component.ts within the inline view template right here. Let me paste some HTML. Notice here we have a div element with padding set to 5 pixels. This is going to give us 5 pixels padding on all sides of the browser window. And inside this we have an unordered list and we are using these two bootstrap classes, nav and nav tabs. This is going to give us a bootstrap navigation component. I'm not going to go into the details of bootstrap navigation component because we discussed that in detail in part 27 of bootstrap tutorial. And inside this unordered list, we have two list items. And within the list item, we have an anchor element. And on the anchor element, we have used this router link directive. And notice this router link directive is pointing it to a string called home. And this router link directive 
is provided by the router module that we have imported within our root application module. So here we have the router module. This router module provides this router link directive. And basically this router link directive is telling Angular router to navigate the user to this home path when they click on this home link. And what should happen when the um, you know, Angular router sees this path in the URL that's defined within our route in the root application module. So basically, if it sees this path within the URL, then we are asking Angular router to redirect the user to home component. And that's how the home component is displayed if the user clicks on this home link. Before we run our application, Let's include this URL rewrite rule within the web.config file of our Angular application. This rewrite rule tells IIS how to handle routes. So basically this match URL right here rewrites every URL to this URL. And this rewrite URL right here should match the base href URL that we have in our index.html. So let's include the URL rewrite rule within the web.config file of our Angular application. And then let's run our application by pressing Ctrl F5. Notice we have the application menu rendered as expected. Now let's click on the Home tab. Nothing happens. And when we click on the Employees tab, nothing happens either. So let's launch Browser Developer Tools and investigate what's going on. We are on the console tab. We have three errors. So let's investigate these errors. Look at the first message right here. It says, cannot find primary outlet to load home component. So basically, Angular is complaining that it does not know where to render the home component view template. Now, when we click on the home tab, we want the home component view template to be rendered just below this menu. And along the same lines, when we click on the Employees tab, we want the Employee List Component View template to be rendered below this menu. And we know this menu is present within our root component right here. So we want the Routed Components View template to be displayed just below this menu. And to tell that to Angular, we use this directive, Router Outlet. And this directive is provided by the Router module, which we have imported in our root application module. So basically, this directive tells Angular Router to render the Routed Components View template at the location where we have this directive. So let's save our changes and reload our web page. Notice now we have the Home Component View template displayed. And when we click on the Employees tab, the employee list component view template is displayed. Now here we have a problem with the service. Notice we have an error message here. That's basically because our web API service is not running. So let's go ahead and run our web API service as well. Right click on the web API service project, view, and we want to view it in browser. Our web service is now up and running. So let's reload this web page one more time. Notice now we have the list of employees displayed. And when we click on the Home tab, we have the Home Component View template. And when we click on the Employees tab, we have the Employee List Component View template. At the moment, we have a small problem. We don't know which tab is active, Home or Employees. What we want to do is style the Active tab slightly differently so the end user knows which tab is active. And for that, we're going to make use of the Bootstrap Active CSS class. And the easiest way to apply that Active CSS class is by using another directive called Router Link Active Directive. Again, this directive is also provided by the router module which we have imported. And we are going to set this to the Bootstrap Active CSS class. Now, what this directive is going to do is if this element's route matches the active route, then it applies this active CSS class to the anchor element. In our case, we actually want to apply it to its parent, that is the list item. So let's actually apply this directive on the list item itself. And let's do the same thing with this list item. Let's save our changes and reload a web page.
notice now the employees tab is styled slightly differently and similarly when we click on the home tab it's styled differently so we know the home tab is active one important point to keep in mind is this URL rewrite rule is required if you are using IIS as your web server. If you are using a different web server then a different configuration may be required. What configuration to use depends on your web server and that is clearly documented within the official Angular documentation. If we don't have this URL rewrite rule within the web.config file of our Angular application, then the routing may not work correctly. For example, when we reload this web page by pressing Ctrl R or Ctrl F5 or by clicking this reload button or clicking on this back of forward arrows or when we type the URL directly within the address bar, the routing may not work as expected. Let's actually prove this. Let's comment the rewrite rule within web.config file save our changes and then let's try to reload this web page by clicking on this reload icon and notice we get 404 so routing is not working as expected we need this URL rewrite rule only if we are using HTML5 style routes if we are using hash style routes then it is not required at the moment we are using HTML5 style routes without hash in the URL let's try to use hash style routes to use hash style routes we have to set use hash to true and we do that within the for root method so along with the routes we pass an object which contains this property use hash and we have set that to true so with this change in place let's run our application one more time by pressing Ctrl F5 notice the URL in the address bar we're using hash style routing when we click on the employees tab we see the employee list component view template back and forward buttons in the browser work as expected similarly when we click this reload button it still works as expected and when we type directly in the address bar for example I want to go to the home route look at that it still works and if we try to navigate to a route that does not exist for example we don't have a route called ABC look at what happens we are routed to page not found component and the text that we have in the view template is displayed right here and along the same lines if we try to navigate to the root URL we should be redirected to the home route that's what we have specified within our route configuration so here hash style routing is working even without the rewrite rule in web.config file thank you for listening and have a great day